Hello, YouTube family. Tom, AKA Patrick, here with... Mercy. We are here today to do a spoiler review of the film Elvis. Mercy and I saw the film Elvis on Tuesday, July 5th, and we would like to, just as something different, it's our first film review for this channel. Maybe we'll do more, but we both saw it. Um, I was really excited. I grew up an Elvis fan and been watching the trailers since they dropped in February. So Mercy and I saw it together. So we're going to give our thoughts today. I do want to say like, subscribe, comment if you're new to the channel. And if you're an old friend, thank you so much for returning. Um, before we begin, I would just like to mention that if you're interested in seeing this film, we are going to give major spoilers. And many spoilers. Many spoilers. So maybe if you're excited and, and you want to see it, just stop watching right now. We're totally cool with that. Just click Because out. we are giving spoilers. It's a long film, so we won't tell you everything, obviously, but um, without further ado, let's begin the review of Elvis. Mercy, what are your initial thoughts on the film Elvis? All right, so the film Elvis, we saw Elvis on Tuesday, and it was a pretty good movie, I must say. The movie is two hours and 39 minutes long, I believe, which, I mean, it's long, but it's not that bad, uh, and... Uh, what I really liked was that it also felt very short. Like, it didn't feel long. It felt very short. And I think a main contributing factor of that was because of the scenes. Many, many, many of the scenes were very short and kind of, it, it kind of like went back and forth a lot. Like, sometimes when I was just sitting there in the theater, I was like counting down the seconds between each of the scenes. And the majority of them were like one second long. <laughs> um... So, yeah, that's kind of an um, interesting directing move. Um, the director of the movie is Baz Luhrmann. He's known for, like, having some very creative movies, some very creative directing choices, which doesn't really resonate that well with fans. Um, yeah, also, I wish the beginning of the movie they put, like, a little bit of a warning, like, maybe, like, an, like an epilepsy warning, even though there wasn't that much flashing, or maybe just, like, some kind of warning that said something about how there was a lot of flashing because there was a lot of flash or not flashing but spinning like a lot of spinning a lot of just like fast movements and i know a lot of people are sensitive about that kind of stuff so i did really wish they put like a little bit of a warning at the beginning but they didn't so people have to sit through it i guess uh but all of that aside the movie was great i loved how they went from scene to scene in the movie about you know all of Elvis's life uh the movie is narrated by Tom Hanks who plays Colonel Tom Parker or Elvis's manager which I felt like that was a really nice part of the movie because um it was just a nice way to kind of tie in all the scenes together because I felt like if there was no narration then I kind of feel like the movie would just kind of be a tad bit off but since there is some narration and some like input from Colonel Tom Parker who a lot of people think is like the villain of the story as he mentioned because uh he took like 50% of Elvis's income which is like crazy uh so yeah it was kind of interesting to hear like that input um but then we also got a lot of different perspectives just from the way of like the dialogue of each of the characters and just like the whole movie in general I mean it was great I loved it um, there were, I felt like there was a lot of other elements as well that kind of made the movie not quite like a biography. As I mentioned earlier, there were a lot of flashy scenes, a lot of spinning scenes, a lot of like cut scenes where it was like 20 scenes at a time, which I mean, that might be a little bit out there for, uh, those, uh, Elvis purists who would just, you know, coming into the theater, they might have thought, oh, I'm just going to watch a little biography of Elvis, you know? No, it's completely different from that. Um, but I mean, it's okay. I don't, I don't really mind it. Um, I feel like some parts were a tad bit off at times though. Um, but yeah, I also liked how they incorporated like modern music into the movie. I mean, that might be a little bit out there, but I think it kind of played off nice in, in the scenes that it did play off in, which I really like. Um, so yeah, I, I don't want to go talking on for too long now, but okay. yeah, but 
overall, I really liked the movie. Um, I felt like they played off a lot of important scenes uh, of Elvis's life. I especially love the 68 comeback special when he sang If I Can Dream. That was probably my favorite scene of all of the movie. Um, all the actors did great, especially uh, Austin Butler who played Elvis. He's guaranteed to win the Oscar. Like, I don't, I don't think he, anybody else is gonna win for best actor. I think, I think it's gonna be him. Um, so yeah, uh, overall, I would give the movie a 9.1. It was, it was pretty good. I wish they kind of cut back from some of the flashy scenes and kind of focused a lot more on like Elvis's life. Um, oh, also one more thing. I wish they focused a lot more on Elvis's movie career because. Mm -hmm. They just kind of like glossed over that and didn't put like any like um a lot of thought into it or not thought but like they didn't add a lot of scenes into it they just kind of passed through it like boom eight years of his life you know for five minutes and then oh let's go on to another thing you know uh yeah i wish they put a lot more um like scenes in into that part of his life because I felt like that could have been better for the movie. It might be a little bit longer, but I really wouldn't have mind. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, I'm not done talking. Patrick? Wow, Mercy, that was a fantastic review. Um, I have a lot to say. I'm a fast talker, so I will make this um, less than six minutes, I promise. Okay, so I have been looking forward to this film for quite some time. I was only, you know, a boy when Elvis passed away. However, he was a big part of my musical life. My parents liked him quite a bit. I grew up watching a lot of documentaries about Elvis. I watched some of his films on like TV growing up when I was a kid. And I was just always fascinated by him. Elvis and the Beatles, I just, I just love. They're just a gigantic part of music history, obviously. So going into it from the trailer, I knew it was gonna be a bit flashy. So I wasn't shocked at any of the flashiness but I must say, I underestimated, as Mercy said, the constant spinning of the screen, I cannot emphasize enough. If you suffer from vertigo, if you get headaches easily, I would not watch this film in the theater. Um, I did look it up. It does come out on HBO Max, for those of you who get that, on August 8th. So they're waiting 45 days after the uh, movie release date. So if you want to watch it at home, it will be on uh, HBO Max exclusively, which... Uh, we don't get but that's okay we, we saw we saw the film already but i just wanted to mention that if you're not a, you know if if you don't like a lot of spinning i wouldn't go see this movie to be honest it'll give you a headache i got a bit of a headache watching it but i'm so glad i saw it in the theater okay so i agree with a lot of what mercy said particularly i did not love the opening of the movie maybe the first 15 minutes after that, I thought it settled in quite nicely. They still had some effects, like like Mercy said. There were some times, I'm not joking, where there would be 20 screens at once on the movie screen. And it would show footage of the real Elvis and Austin Butler and footage of crowds from the 70s and footage of extras for the movie. It was visually just kind of almost too much. I know, I think a lot of people, though, will like that. There are some people out there, like, you know, just film aficionados who might think this is just so cool you know Lerman has directed um Romeo and Juliet The Great Gatsby Moulin Rouge a lot of critics just love those films Moulin Rouge in particular is has I think like 91 percent on Rotten Tomatoes it's, it's a very popular film so I guess overall my main takeaway from the film is that it is not a documentary it is not a true biography you will not come out learning a ton more about Elvis, perhaps, than you went in. But Butler captures the essence of Elvis Presley. He doesn't look exactly like him, of course, no one does. What a handsome guy Elvis was, no doubt about it. And what a charismatic guy. But Butler does, he captures, it's hard to explain, you have to see it. He captures just the utter fabric of Elvis. You forget when you're watching the film that it's not the Elvis Presley up there. Um, I thought Hanks' performance was strange. The, all the prosthetics he's wearing, for those of you who've watched the trailer, know what I mean. His accent is strange. Although the real Colonel Tom Parker was from the Netherlands and did kind of have a, a, a Dutch accent. So the accent is not as ridiculous as it might come across. Um, Parker did kind of talk that way. So, the, like I said, like Mercy said, the entire film was narrated by Tom Hanks' character, Colonel Tom Parker. And it's very fascinating. And I think it really ties the film together. I agree with Mercy. I think 
the 20 to 25 minute scene that they do on the 68 comeback special, which was shown on NBC, one of the highest rated television programs of all time, was phenomenal. Like they could have done an entire movie about it and I would have been in. It was phenomenal. And I must say, for those of you who love the show Stranger Things, the actor Doc Ray Montgomery, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, played Steve Bender, the director of the 68 comeback special. He was phenomenal. It was it was really cool to see someone from Stranger Things um, in the movie. So I am going to score this film a 9.3, slightly higher than Mercy, but I am also going to say this. He will definitely, Austin Butler will be nominated for Best Actor for this film. Whether he wins, who knows? I think he is the favorite. He just became Elvis Presley, and this will skyrocket his career into stardom. I also want to mention before I end the review that, and this is an extreme spoiler for the ending. So if you don't want it, if you don't want to hear what the ending is, turn the video off right now. We take zero offense. But I have I have to mention it because it was so emotional, one of my favorite parts of the film, if not my favorite. The last five minutes of the film, they only show the real Elvis Presley. And it's so emotional and so moving that I'm not ashamed to admit I had tears in my eyes. It was incredibly emotional. The entire film experience, honestly, is worth it just for the ending. So if you love Elvis Presley, if you're a fan of his, it is worth all the spinning and all the crazy directorial tricks that Baz Luhrmann did just to see the ending. I highly recommend this film. I only don't go higher because a lot of the directorial stuff I thought was a little over the top. I understand that's his style. I didn't love it. I wish it would have been a different director, but it's okay. I respect his work and he nailed the ending and that's what I walked out with was the ending. Um, extreme spoiler here too. The song Unchained Melody is the last song they show Elvis performing in 1977 in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's so emotional. Please see this movie just for that. So 9.3 for this film, a 9.9 .9 for Austin Butler. Mercy, what would you give Austin Butler's performance? 9.9. 9.9. I, I can't go 10 just because 10 is, you know, perfect. But 9.9, .9, I don't know how you could do a better job of acting. So I think it was, it's definitely worth seeing this film in the theater unless you suffer from vertigo and unless, you know, you get headaches easily, then I, then I perhaps would not. I'd wait for HBO Max or order HBO Max. If you don't have it, I think you'd get it for $10 a month. So it'd be, essentially, you could buy one month of HBO Max and the same cost of a theater ticket, you know, if you really want to see the film. But Elvis is in theaters now. It's doing really well at the box office. I think Mercy and I were both pleased by the, by the experience. And guys, that's it. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notification. And until... Next time, thank you so much for watching this. I know it's a little bit different for us. Thank you so much for watching. Elvis, if you're up there listening, and all of you, keep smiling. Keep shopping.